Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right, take your Bibles and turn with me back to 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. Now, remember last time we discussed how that Hezekiah was dying. God sent and told him, you're dying. Put your house in order. Uh, and uh, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he cried and he prayed and he asked God to heal him. And, and no, Lord, I don't want what you've said. I want what I say. I want more life. And uh, you remember God saw his tears and remembered, you know, he'd been a good king. And so he says, okay, I'm going to give you another 15 years. Uh, and you remember the miracle of the sundial going back 10 degrees. Uh, so that was pretty amazing. Um, and so sure enough, he was healed. And on the third day, he went up to the temple and, uh, and he worshiped. And uh, all Jerusalem rejoiced that the king Hezekiah was going to live. Now he knew that he had another 15 years. If you knew that you had, uh, if you were, you know, you're an older guy and you know that you're going to live for sure for another 15 years, there would be, you know, you would have the ability to do some amazing things. Uh, you would uh, say, okay, let's set a program in place. Let's do this. Let's make sure that, you know, my heir is in place. And, uh, and all of these, all of these things would be, uh, you know, taken care of. So it was a, uh, it, it, it could have been a good thing. But instead, Hezekiah kind of sat back, back on his laurels and uh, really wasn't paying attention to God after that. Um, and we, we read about um, in verse 12, at that time, uh, Barodak Baladan, Barodak Baladan, <laughs> the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah hearkened, uh, for he had heard that, he, uh, excuse me, and Hezekiah hearkened unto them, and he showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointments, and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. And there was nothing in his house, nor in all of his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Now, you say, well, why is that a bad thing? You don't go showing off to people who could invade you and destroy you and steal everything from you. It was a pride thing with Hezekiah. And he wanted to show this other king how rich he was and how prosperous he was. And you could, I suppose, spiritualize that and say, well... <laughs> I want to show how God has blessed me. Yeah, but there are times when you need to just keep your wallet closed. Uh, this is one of the things we learn in foreign countries. that You don't pull out your money and count it in front of everybody watching. Why? Because you're inviting people to rip you off. Um, and so his pride led him to make a grievous error. And uh, I want you to see what happened because of it. Then, verse 14, came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said to him, What said to you these men? And then, from whence are they? And Hezekiah said, They have come from a far country, even from Babylon. Far country? Mm. You remember what happened when, uh, when uh, 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 what was his name, Joshua, uh, went and... Uh, these people came to him and it was obvious they'd been traveling from a long ways away and they said, oh, we are from afar, far, and we would like to make a, a truce with you, an agreement with you. And, and they praised him and they praised the children of Israel and all the elders said, well, it's obviously they've come from afar, far away and we're never going to have to deal with them, but look, yeah, yeah, let's make a truce with them because we're mighty and we can help them and maybe they can help us. And this is a good thing. And they never asked God. And then they found out that these people were from just over the hill. They were the Gibeonites. They were in the city, the next city they were supposed to destroy. And now they couldn't. And God said, hey, you said that you were going to protect them. Now you're going to have to. And then just a couple days later, turns out that they have to protect them. Anyway. The point is that when you go and do things without asking God, you're just 
leaving yourself open. Uh, the small things, the big things in life, you say, well, I'm a kid. I don't have a lot of big things in my life. Yeah, but you will. And you'd better start getting into the habit of spending time in prayer every day before God saying, Lord, I'm going to have some decisions that I need to make today and I want you to show me I'm submitting my will to yours. And before you make a decision, say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What would your son Jesus do? How would you want me to do this? We need to, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. But what happens when we don't acknowledge him in all our ways? Well, he can't direct our paths. He's not going to force his way into our life. Isaiah said, wow, you shouldn't have showed him everything. Notice verse 17. Hear the verse, verse of the Lord, the, the voice of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Verse 17, behold, the day shall come that all that is in thine house and that which is thy father's have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried unto Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from me, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Okay? That's a terrible thing. All because he went and showed them everything he had, and now they wanted to come and get it. And in time, they did. Now, what can we learn this from this? See, this goes back to when Hezekiah was told that he was going to die. Maybe he should have just said, well, Lord, if this is your best will, then that's what I want, even if it means dying. But then the Lord gave him 15 years, and he really didn't use it for the Lord. Listen, we need to use what God gives us for the Lord. Um, that's why he gave it to us. And when we use it for our own pride and our own ambition and our own enjoyment, God isn't honored. And so we need to say, wait a minute, Lord, what do you want me to do? But there are times when we come to God and we say, Lord, this is what I want. You need to give this to me. And God says, okay, it's not the best, but I'm going to give it to you. The Bible says that with the Israelites, uh, that God gave them the desires of their heart, but sent leanness to their soul. In other words, it took away all their happiness. They had what they thought they wanted, but it didn't bring them happiness. God gave them the desires of their heart, but sent leanness to their soul. We need to submit our will to God so that we can have his best in life good advice? I think so. <laughs> hey, love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.